very swiftly. David Jones would like to invite you to take the floor. David is founder of Clausify, which, not that David Jones. <laughs> Just along the naughty step of what you said earlier. Um, yeah, so um, David Jones is the founder of Clausify, the platform that GSA um, partners in with, and also leads the GSA contracting work stream. So over to you, David. Okay. Great. Thank you, Kerry. Hello, everyone. Um, I am David Jones. I am the founder and CEO of Clausify, as Kerry said, which is a business-to-business -business, uh, contracting platform. Prior to that, I spent about 15 years being a commercial lawyer, so I'm very much aware of the pain that the contracting process causes many of you. Um, if you can just go back onto your Slido, for those of you who have it open, the uh, number to remind you all of it is 1960373. Once more, 1960373. There are some questions there. Grateful if you could just uh, answer. Just to get a bit of a feel for how you're all feeling about it at the moment. I've got a question one. Yeah. Okay. So that's question number one. So you've got it. It is how long do you think it takes your organisation to negotiate a new services arrangement? One week, one month, three months, or longer? The results for that question are coming in slowly, but at the moment, um, almost half the audience say it is longer. So longer than three months to negotiate a new services arrangement. Right, next question's going live. That question is, what delays agreeing contracting terms? Commercials, legal clauses, availability of resources, or lack of standards? Okay, this is fairly evenly dispersed, actually. So, um, legal legal's making a late surge. It is, yes. <laughs> oh, you've got the results there as well. Yeah. Why does anyone have the results? Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll let you take this then, David. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. So, yep, legal clauses there. It looks like with seventeen people answering is is the winner. Do the next one. <laughs> Who owns the contracting process in your organization? Procurement, business owner, legal department, or finance? I guess it depends topic to topic. I should imagine for this one, but. Okay, bit of a well, business owner. Business owner's winning that one. Okay. Next one, I think business owner's got an unassailable lead at that point. And finally, I'm going to ask you to hold this one till the end of the presentation, because I'd like to get your thoughts on that one at the end. So, um, this is, as I see it, the typical contracting process that we have today. You start with a pro-customer document, because generally customer's king and dictates the terms on which they want to buy services, and then usually this is a very one-sided pro-customer document, and you spend many weeks, or indeed over three months, as we just got back recently, oscillating between a probably overzealous supplier markup back to an over pro-customer markup, until you get into what's in this purple area here I've called the settlement zone, basically the area which the agreement becomes kind of acceptable. And of course, as we get to this process, it costs time and money which is not at all good for anyone, but it's least of all good for uh, diverse suppliers and small and medium-sized businesses. 
Um, it also creates deal fatigue. People are sick of the sight of each other before they've even started the engagement. It's expensive. There's a focus on often non-commercial terms. A bit of overlawing sometimes goes on. And it's just painful when people just want to start work. Um, and if I may, I heard a conversation with someone who may or may not want to elaborate, that's fine. But that individual was telling me that 10 months on, they still don't have a contract. Um, it's been a very painful process. A document was put in front of this individual that was, might as well have been in Greek to a non lawyer. Um, where, where do you start with that? It's not particularly making the process accessible uh, or fair for small to medium sized enterprises who don't have deep pockets for legal resources to carry out detailed reviews and markups. So, how are we going to make the situation better? GSA has put together with these three different groups in, we've got some law firm partners, uh, and hopefully Imran and Kit, I'd hope to maybe get DLA involved as well at some point in this in the future. Um, so we've got some law firm partners there who have helped, um, some business advisors, and some in-house and other lawyers, um, as well as different industry organisations, have put together what we thought was a pretty fair and balanced set of terms and conditions. They are, of course, oh, sorry, for a digital and consulting framework agreement with a statement of work that sits under it um, and a, a change mechanism. So that's basically one suite of one suite of documents and uh, a confidentiality agreement. It took us about a year to align on the digital and consulting framework agreement and all the provisions in there, liability, IP, all that sort of stuff, which kind of hints at the pain a lot of you go through on on an on a regular basis, but of course the benefit with this is that year's investment, the idea is that it would be a one-to-many sort of use case. So having gone through that pain once, that we did, we'd hope that you all wouldn't need to go through that pain. So we were hoping to take a hit for the team and that people would start using this and adopting it and not having to go through that many months of painful negotiation back and forth. To get behind it, the uh, GSA has just introduced these three badges. So a bronze badge will be for someone who adopts on a, a regular basis, but not necessarily owns the document as this is our go-to-market document. We won't use anything else. So you'll get a bronze badge for that. Silver if you adopt one or more of the documents as your, as your going in position. That's, that's how you deal with small, medium-sized organizations. And a gold if you adopt two or more um, of the GSA standards in your contracting. But this isn't enough. We need to create a movement. We need to create a revolution. We need to get people actually on board and enthused about this because doing the same thing we've been doing is going to get the same results. If people really want to change it, we need to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. It's pointless talking about how you're committed to supply diversity and you're making changes to your RFPs, but your contract you submit in that RFP is 90 pages it's got liability positions that are completely unacceptable for small, medium-sized organizations, insurance requirements that are completely out of kilter with the suppliers you're dealing with. That is not the way to open doors. That closes them. Please come on board. Join the standardization revolution. Um, join, uh, follow link, uh, Clausify on LinkedIn. Make noise. Hashtag Clausify. If you scan this code, you can get free access as GSA members to our NDA service. So please go ahead and use that. But most of all, don't do nothing. We need to, if we're going to get meaningful change, we need to all get behind this. The uh, associations, I've spoken with some of you, I think we need to try and get clausify terms advanced and pushed. If everyone keeps saying, I have my own document, it's not going to work because the person across the table from you has their own document. Someone somewhere has to accept a middle ground, otherwise things won't change. As I said before, we need to walk the walk. Please walk with me. Yeah.